Hey, hello and welcome to this new episode. To this special, creepy, horror, Halloween episode. So today I'm going to show you how you can cut off parts of your body. So let's directly jump into After Effects. And in here I have already imported the footage that I've recorded to create this shot. So before starting with all the details in After Effects, you definitely have to think about what you need to get this shot look realistic. At first I've shot a still clean plate and I've just mounted my camera on a tripod. And on top of that I have the hand green screen footage. And you see that I have recorded myself wearing this green sleeve, which just makes it a little bit easier to get rid of the arm later on. But I ended up using a garbage mat for that anyways. So in this case, I only use that edge for the tracking. And as you see, I have also painted tracking markers on my skin because I want to track that edge and also this edge or this line here. And in that case, when my skin deforms or bends, I can have all of that information later on because I want to have the cut somewhere in between and I can benefit of all the tracking data I can get out of this side and this side. As a next plate, I have simply recorded some blood and this is also just a freeze frame. And later on, I'm just going to use the track that I will create for the hand and add a mask to it and in that way, when the hand comes in, it automatically masks out the right parts of the blood. And this is really the power that I want to show you here, because in the end, I'm trying to only do one track of my hand and then use it for compositing, for masking, as well as for a garbage mat, and also to mask out the other elements that I need for this shot to make it look realistic. And therefore, I have, for example, also shot this still of me with some fake blood, because I want to use that element as the back of my arm here. And on top of that, I have a separate plate. And this is just me with a handheld camera. And later on, I just want to track all of this and apply it to the final shot so that it looks like everything was filmed with a handheld camera. Okay, so as I told you, we want to start with a simple track of my hand slash arm and of the skin. So let's disable those, go to the hand and bring out the Mocha plugin. So in Mocha AE CC is in the new 2019 version of After Effects installed and it runs within After Effects. So you just drag and drop it onto the footage, click on the Mocha button and we are already good to go. Let's start tracking that from the end maybe because we see a little bit more detail. And as I told you, I want to track this edge here and I also want to track this side. But I'm not going to create a new layer for this, but I want to just create a shape that adds to this layer. So therefore I'm going to take the tool with the small plus sign and I'm going to create a shape around here and I'm closing it with the right mouse button by the way. And you see now I have two shapes but they both sit within the same layer. And now I'm doing the same once again for those two points. So in this way, I get most of the deformation and bending and stretching of the skin. And we are good to go. So let's track this backwards because we are at the end of the clip. And for your clip, it could be that you have a frame with most information somewhere in between or directly at the beginning. So you can just start your tracking from there. And let's just quickly stop it because when we zoom in by hitting the set button and dragging the mouse, we see that we lost a little bit of the track. So I'm just repositioning the points really quick. I could also just mark all the points and move it in total, just like so. And the good thing about this is I don't have to retrack it. It automatically interpolates between the two keyframes. You see? Great. So I can just go on from there. I can move the image by clicking on the mouse wheel. And let's just quickly reposition this a little bit for the last keyframe. 
So now I'm always doing a step that you don't have to do, but it's just for me to check if everything went the way I wanted it. And therefore I'm clicking on the show planar surface tool and you get this blue rectangle. And I'm just positioning this roughly around the area where I want to add something in later. And I can also click on this grid. And when I'm playing this back, you can see that this just gives me a visual reference and you can see all the bending and warping positioning, rotation and scale that happens now. And this really looks great and I'm really happy with the result. Why not save this by doing control S, name it our track. And now we have created that one track that we wanted to create and now everything should be procedural. So everything we do should be connected to that one track we have so far. So let's create a new shape. And this time we want to really create a new one that we want to use as a garbage mat because we want to mask out everything that's on that side of my arm or hand. So I'm going through those points and then just masking out this side. And we don't want to track this again. We can just link it to the track that we have created. So we want to link it to the track and there's a setting for that. We want to link the one that we have selected to our track. When we scrub through this now, you can see that our garbage mat follows, just adjusted on the last frame here because my hair is coming in. And now we should have a pretty good garbage mat. Call this our garbage mat. And now let's do the next one. And by the way, this garbage mat we can also use to add the blood. So we killed two birds with one stone. Perfect. So now let's create our main mask, the mask that cuts the hand or the arm. So therefore let's zoom in here and create that mask. And here I'm also cutting a line for the shadow. Maybe just like so. And again, I don't have to track this. I can use all the nice warping and bending that I have already tracked with those three different shapes here. So again, I'm linking it to the track and call this our hand mask. And now let's start comping this together. So we just close this window and in our effect, we just go to the mat and we want to create AE masks. So let's click on create AE masks. And there we have them. By hitting M, you see all the different masks and they are also named hand mask, garbage mask and the track. The track we don't need, so let's click on none. And also for the garbage mat at the moment, click on none. And now we only have the mask for the hand in here. So when we watch this, this already looks pretty nice. And you see that this is not just following, it's also moving with the hand. Maybe add a little bit of feathering to this so we can twirl down the hand mask or hit F for feather. Let's try it with maybe two pixels, maybe even three. And that matches to the sharpness and motion blur. By the way, you can also add motion blur to this. Now we get realistic motion blur. But let's turn it off for now because it renders a bit slower. Just turn it on for the final rendering. To get rid of those hard lines, we could now play with the garbage mat. But we want to use that as a really rough one for the blood later on. Maybe we just quickly go back into Mocha and use that mask here again and then just make it a really, really large mat around here. And in that way we can bring it in a little bit and feather it a lot. And I think this is exactly what I want to do here. And this makes a lot more sense when you see it. So back in here, this is the mask that I want to work on. So I can simply duplicate it. Now I want to bring it a little bit over and I want to make a really large mat around the whole rest of the image. By the way, if you're distracted because it's just too much detail and you don't know where you're clicking at, you can always hide the other ones or you can just recolor them. So now if we would feather this a lot, we don't get that hard edge and we could still bring the hand mask on top of it because then we get that detail. So we basically want to have the red part covering where we want to have a lot of detail and our sharper edge and the green where we want to have a soft edge, just like so. Okay, we save this and let's have a look. So let's duplicate the hand and call this maybe the feather. And again, we want to create AE masks. 
And on this one, let's just only use the hand mask copy we have created and delete all the rest. Call this also the feathered mask. And now let's feather this. You see, now we only have the hard edge where the table hits the arm. That is what we wanted. Now let's go to the blood, copy the mask garbage mat onto the first frame of our blood, hit M for the mask, go to add. Now again, we can play with the mask expansion should be a little bit overlapping with the hand and then of course sit beneath the hand. And as I have shot all of this in a daylight situation, this is just a bit brighter because maybe in the other shot there were a little bit more clouds, but we can quickly play with the levels. Okay, we are starting to get somewhere. Now let's bring in the reference we have created and quickly mask this out. By the way, I'm hitting G to get my pen tool and I'm just roughly masking this out because later on I will work on the look of this a bit more. And I'm going to position this somewhat around here and bring it beneath the hand. And this way we get the back layer. And of course this needs to be a bit darker because it would receive some shadow. Go to the mask properties, feather it also a bit and maybe bring it in. And now, as I told you, I want to make this look a bit more rough. Just type in rough. And there we have the roughen edges effect and just bring it out here. And what this does, it just roughens up the edges. So when you play with the scaling, you can see the more you go down with the scaling, the finer the edges get. And then you also have to play with the sharpness of this. Maybe like so. You can also stretch the width or height, which stretches the fine lines in that direction or in that direction, depending on you go with positive or negative values and play a little bit with the complexity. And now what we can do is we can colorize this, go to rough and color and just give it like a dark blood color. Maybe even a bit darker. So I just click on the color and if I go down with it, it gets darker, but stays in the same color scheme. Looking really good. So I've done this at frame 104. So I'm clicking on the marker here and this sets a marker because it's not tracked yet. So I want to also deform and warp and bend it in the same way that our skin is bended and warped. I will do that with a corner pin. So I want to set that frame as the default for the corner pin. So each four pins should sit exactly in the edge and from there on they should start to stretch and bend out according to our skin. Okay, so this is easy to do. At first we need to create that frame that it has the exact dimensions. So for the arm ref, I want to pre-compose this and call it the arm ref, move all attributes into the new composition. Okay, now we have this one exactly the size we want to have it at that frame. Now we want to apply the tracking data that we have created from the skin with the same settings. And therefore we just once again go into Mocha. We are at frame 104 already, which is great. In other ways you just have to type in the number where you want to be down here and we go onto the track disable the rest, go to our surface tool where we later on defined the area. But now the tricky part is these four corners will be the corners of our corner pin. So they should all be exactly in the edge at that frame. And there's a button doing exactly that. It says expand the planar surface of selected layers to fill the entire frame. When I click it, you can see now it fills the frame. And when I scrub through this, you can see that it deforms in the same way like the skin does, but at exactly frame 104, it is in the four edges. Exactly what we need. So let's save this, control S for save, close it, go into our Mocha tracking data. This time we want to create the tracking data and we want to create it from the track layer that we have just defined. But don't only click it here, you have to also enable the switch here. Then we click OK and now we have to choose what we want to do with it. We can export corner pin data, which is exactly what we wanted. And I'm also going with the version that supports motion blur. And we want to export it to the layer that we have created, our arm ref. So click on that. And all we have to do is export. And when I click on the arm now, you can see that I have corner pin data. When I hit the U button, you can see all the data that has been created. And when I play this back now, 
you can see it deforms and bends really great. For the arm we have a foreground which is the skin, we have the background which is the red layer, the red blood. So maybe we also want to create some bones that come out there. Therefore let's just create a white layer with the brightest tones in here. Just something like this. Bring it beneath our hand and just draw broken bones. Now we want to feather that a little bit. Once again, we take like two pixels and give them a little bit of a bevel. So we can bevel the alpha or bevel the edges, which is kind of the same here. So this just gives them a little bit depth and I'm going to blur this slightly so that we don't have that hard edge here with a Gaussian blur, maybe also two pixels, maybe also add a ramp effect to it, gradient ramp because we want to have the original color at one end and a darker at the other end. So this is our original color that we had and we want to have it dark on that edge. I think we took the wrong color here, so let's click on the end color. Just go down to our solid. And now we can play with the gradient. So now let's do the same thing again, this time for frame 174. So we go into the green, go to frame 174 and this is what we've set before. And now just click again. Now this is our default frame. And now let's just apply the same thing to the bones. We want to create the track and apply a corner pin data to the bones and hit apply. And everything is working as expected. But maybe now we can just offset the bones one or two frames. And we can also work on that edge that we have created. So I can duplicate this. Maybe I'm also going to bring out a uh, roughen edges here or even better, I'm just copying the one that I've already created with the color, bring it on my hand. Now I just need another mask to mask out that specific part here. And again, we can do that in Mocha. Only need a mask for that and again I can link it to the one that we have created, call it blending, mask, save, close it, duplicate the hand, remove the roughen edges and now just create the mask that we need to mask out that specific part. Here's my blending mask. So now I have a mask only for that part and I can now just offset this, tint it. And maybe again use a roughen edge effect. Okay, so now we are almost done. So let's pre-compose all of the horror, track the motion that we filmed and apply it to it. Again, we go into Mocha. So let's create a shape and there's enough to track in the whole image. So let's just track this forward track the rest from here on backwards. Then we call this layer our camera move, save it, go to After Effects. Here I'm going to just create a new null object and for the tracking data again we create the tracking data from the camera move, click OK. We want to have the transform data, so scale, rotation, position, want to apply it to the null object and hit Apply. Now enable the horror again and link it to the null object. And maybe this is just a little too much for the scaling. So let's work on that. We hit S for scale on the null object. Go to our graph editor here and you see it's really scaling a lot. So when I click on the scale again, all keyframes are selected and I can just bring them closer together. Now it's not scaling 100 to 140%, but maybe just up to 100 20-25% and now I can scale this back down. Perfect, now we have a really nice looking image. Turn on motion blur, maybe bring out an adjustment layer for some color correction. Go to the levels and this is just some final tweaking. You can do it how you like it and I'm also using a hue and saturation effect. So at first I want to bring those sliders closer together just for me that I have little bit more contrast in the image and to give it more of this washed out look I'm going to take off some of the blacks. For that horror look I think it works quite good. 
and I'm just going to go down with the overall saturation maybe bring the reds a little bit up again and then adding a last adjustment layer and just create a new vignette make this a bit stronger and let's just play back what we have created and remember we did all of this with just one mocha track all the masking all garbage matting the position of the different elements really everything and you could even think this further you could add like a particle system that spreads out some red particles as blood and also parent that to the bones you could stick some blood elements on the hand so you can really do some nice stuff here and now just a small thing that I am sometimes doing to give it a little bit of a film look. And in this way I think it fits quite good because it has this special theme to it. So I'm just showing you an extra trick here at the end. Let's duplicate the horror. And now I want to separate only the highlights. And I do that with an extract effect. Here I just get rid of the black. So I just move the black over until I only have the really bright parts. And then I can feather it. And then I'm adding a directional blur to it. Set this to 90 degrees and increase the blur length. So I get this nice streaks here. And now I can just add them on top. You see, especially here in the light or in my rings, you can really see the effect that this is doing. And just for the sake of it, another color correction, because it still looks too nice for me, too warm. So I'm going to bring out a photo filter and just cool this down. And to even give this more focus on the hand, let's add a second vignette, but this time not just to darken it down, but to blur the edges a bit. So therefore I'm just using a Gaussian blur Set the mat to subtract and feather it a lot. Also, I'm going to click the repeat edge pixels. In this way, we get rid of these edges here. And this is also the end of the tutorial. And it's almost a little bit creepy to say, but I hope you learned a little bit about how you can cut off parts of your body with using visual effects, clever thinking, a little bit of preparation and just one mocha track. And if you liked what you see, then just give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment and always feel free to subscribe because that helps me a lot. If you have questions concerning different parts of this tutorial, just leave me a comment and I really try to answer each and every comment. So now as it is Halloween, go out, buy some fake blood, buy some nice props and start creating your own horror VFX. And now I wish you a lot of sleepless nights in After Effects. Yeah! <laughs>